Hey everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you my living room Christmas decorate with me. And not only am I going to show you how I decorated my space for Christmas, but I'm also gonna show you those little extra details that you can do that will really help give your space that elevated look and make it seem expertly styled, very designer and high end. And the best part is, is that it doesn't have to cost a lot of money and it's not very time consuming. These are very easy things to implement in your space. So whether you are hosting friends and family this holiday season, or you just want a cute, cozy aesthetic space for yourself to relax, in, this is the video for you. So without further ado, let's get into the decorating. Okay, so this was the blank neutral slate we were starting with after I cleaned up all of my fall decor. And for this year's inspiration, I was going for an overall neutral, earthy, and rustic look with subtle pops of classic holiday color. So the first area where I wanted to start was our fireplace since it's the focal point of the entire room. And I just picked up these little command strips and attached three of them onto my mantle as a damage-free way to help hold the garland into place. And for my mantle garland this year, I found this gorgeous, touch Norfolk pine at Kirkland's and I love the lifelike feel of it and I purchased four of them so I could layer them together for a nice full look and something that I've been seeing so many designers implement into their holiday decorating these last couple of years are asymmetrical mantelscapes and this is where the garland is just draped off to one side of the fireplace and it's a great way to help your mantle feel more artistically styled and actually provides a really nice balance when you have things hanging like stockings so it ends up being very very visually pleasing to the eye as well. And obviously there's so many beautiful ways to style mantle garland, but this is just one of my favorites and it really works in our space because we have an asymmetrical furniture layout with our sectional sofa. So it just plays off of that really nicely too. So here I'm just bending it a little bit to help give it some movement and more of an organic shape. And then something that makes such a big difference to your mantle styling is adding fairy lights. And this just takes the ambiance to a whole nother level. And I got these fairy lights for $15 on Amazon. They have several different light settings like flashing and pulsing, and I will link these as well as everything that can possibly be linked below. So just check the description box if you have a question on something that you see, but I just weave the fairy lights back and forth throughout the garland, and I just love the magical vibe that these give to the mantelscape. So next it was time to hang the stockings and I used these weighted hangers that I got at Target last year and I just slid them under the garland and hung my stockings on them. And I always opt for mismatched chunky knit stockings because it just feels very vintage and collected and I love the soft cozy textural interest that it adds to the mantle styling and it just doesn't get any more classic than chunky cable knit stockings. And with them being mismatched, it also makes it really easy if and when you need to add more to your collection. So something simple that you can do to really help elevate the look of your stockings are just to stuff them with greenery. And I found these $3 berry picks in the Target dollar spot and I just put one in each stocking. And this really helps to give your space that expertly styled look. And I just love the rustic touch that it adds. And it is such a small and simple detail, but really makes an impact on the overall look of the mantle. So next, brass accents are a very common theme in most designer spaces because they add a timeless warmth. So this is great, especially especially in the winter time. And I just love the antiqued look of this bell cascade. It looks perfect layered in and contrasted against the white stockings and greenery. I also scored this wooden nutcracker decor piece for $15 online. And I love that it looks super similar to the Pottery Barn one that's almost $60. So I just popped it on the other side of my mantle and it's the perfect narrow accent piece to fit in this awkward little piece of space next to our TV. And I also love the warmth that the slight distressing in the wood adds. So now that the top of the mantle mantle is all styled, I wanted to add something to anchor the bottom hearth area and I wanted to do something that would help bring the outdoors in and make the fireplace feel almost cabin-like. So I started with this large antique pot and then I just stuffed it with some beach towels since we won't be needing them anytime soon. And this is just going to help give our styling pieces a little bit of artificial height since I want this arrangement to be nice and tall. So I just added these birch logs that I found at Home Goods last year and you can see that the towel helps give this piece a little bit of a larger scale which is nice nice and I know Anthropology sells some similar logs which I will link below but as a cheaper option you can always just use some firewood or some logs that you find in your backyard. And then when I was at Target I just picked up these faux juniper stems for five dollars which I thought was a great deal so I snacked five of them and I just added them in with the logs and this makes this arrangement feel really rustic and gathered like you just picked up everything straight out of your backyard and you don't have to use a planter I've seen this done with a woven basket and instead of stems you could always just use a chunky blanket 
it. So just get creative and use what you have on hand. The whole point is just for it to look gathered and cozy. So now that we have the mantle area finished, I wanted to move on over to our reading corner. And as you can see, it's very white right now. So I wanted to make it feel a bit more warm and tone down that stark white while still keeping it neutral. So I started by adding in this plaid pillow that I got on the way day sale a couple of weeks earlier. And plaid pillows are great for holiday decorating because plaid is just so timeless and classic. And it also helps to layer in a subtle pattern, which typically makes a space feel really warm and cozy. I also found this gorgeous bobble knit throw blanket at Target for $35. It was really soft and had a good weight to it, which I liked because sometimes the woven throws there can feel very light and don't provide a lot of warmth depending on the yarn and the weave. But this one was really nice and warm and I loved the subtle texture that it adds to the chair, just helping to warm it up. And it coordinates really nicely with the plaid pillow, helping to bring in those warmer neutral tones. So now that the reading chair looked a bit more snug and cozy, I wanted to add some visual interest to the blanket ladder by hanging something that wasn't a blanket. So I just got this rustic wreath that I scored at Walmart for $20 and I loved the pine cone detail and that it had that real touch quality to it. So when hanging a wreath inside my home, 90% of the time, I just hang them by using these S hooks that I found on Amazon. They're super affordable and convenient and are great for hanging wreaths on things like blanket ladders and cabinets. So I'm just loving how this little reading corner turned out. It feels very understated, very rustic and cozy while still having that festive touch to it. So now I wanna move on over to our console table area. And this is always such a fun place to make a statement with a little holiday vignette. And for our woven baskets, I usually just use them to hold my magazines and then I put blankets on top but when styling this area I always just love to fold the edge of a textured blanket over the side to help it look a bit more intentionally styled and not only does it look cute but it's right there ready to grab for whoever needs to use it and for our main statement piece on the console table I'm just going to use this rustic tree that I scored on Wayfair last year and I love how it almost has a Charlie Brown type personality to it and it just feels like it was freshly cut from a little forest and then to help tie in those warmer brown tones that I have going on with the reading chair. I just put it in this kitchen crock that I found at the thrift store. And then to accent the tree, I layered in this rustic log sled that I found at Home Goods last year. And when styling a console table that's against a wall, consider propping a piece or two of decor, whether that's a sled, a mirror, or artwork. I think propping just gives your styling a very casual feel. And to incorporate that warm brass accent into this vignette, I found this tree for $10 at World Market. And I love styling in groups of three. And in this case, I love how the mix of wood, greenery, and brass contrast against each other and yet still complement each other. Now for the other side of the console, I wanted to keep with the understated rustic theme, but also add something a bit more festive. So I found this super cute ceramic nativity set at Target for $35. And to help it make more of a statement, I decided to display it on this distressed wood pedestal that I found on Amazon and I love this simple speckled stoneware look of the nativity set and how it looks very similar to the one that sold on Pottery Barn for more than twice the price. I think the contrast of the wood against the white ceramic just looks really nice and if you don't want to go out and buy a pedestal but you already have a cake stand laying around you could totally just use that to display the nativity set as well. And to help tie in that rustic theme, I found this little tabletop tree at Hobby Lobby and then I got this planter at Home Goods for $8. And I love the distressed rustic look of it, so I just used that to hold my tree. And I think the burlap trees are really cute on their own, but just by putting them in a little planter that coordinates with your decor style, I think it can really help everything look very well coordinated, intentional, and just professionally tied together. All right, so now that we have most of the living room decor all set up, I'm going to go ahead and put up our Christmas tree. And I'm super excited because I did purchase a new tree for this year. And if you followed my videos from last year, you know I found this amazing tree at Walmart. It was $150. I felt like it looked super realistic and I am still planning to use that tree in our upstairs space in a future Christmas Decorate With Me video. I did just feel like it was very narrow for the space I was using it in. So this year I opted for something a little bit wider and I found it on Amazon for $550, which for me personally, that's a bit of a splurge, but the same exact tree on Macy's cost $1,000 on sale. So I figured it was a good deal. And it's one of those real touch trees that's supposed to look super realistic and lifelike. So yeah, it had a bunch of great reviews and I'm just excited to put it up and see how it looks in our space. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so something that I do to make my tree feel more grand is I elevate it. And this is a huge woven basket that I bought at the thrift store and then I DIY'd to give it that gray washed look. And I have a video on that that I will link here, but you could consider using things like an extra large hamper or maybe an outdoor planner or just DIYing your own by decorating the fronts of a cardboard box. So to add in the height, I just put in these three planter pots so that the weight would be evenly distributed and then added this piece of three quarter inch plywood that my husband cut to size. Now with the new tree, I did run into a bit of a snag with the size of the base. This one was substantially larger than the one I had from last year and wouldn't fit into the basket. So here you can see the difference in size and luckily the bases were interchangeable. So I was just able to use the one from last year's tree, but that's definitely something to consider if you are elevating your tree. If you don't need the extra height, tree collars are a great decorative option too. Now, from the second I untied this tree, I was obsessed. I will say, however, that it did take a ton of fluffing, which is very common for new trees that are right out of the box. So I put on my comfy clothes and my husband's work gloves and started the fluffing process. The best fluffing method that I've found is starting from the very bottom of the tree and then working my way up and then on each individual branch starting from the back of the branch next to the trunk and then moving forward. I was so impressed with these branches and I loved how the middle of the needle was that yellow brown color that just makes it appear super natural and lifelike and I feel like it's one of those trees that people will walk over and touch and say is this real? I feel like if I didn't know it would definitely have me fooled but the tree came in three sections and it was pre-lit so I was able to put the whole thing together myself and I had spent lots of time walking through front gate, pottery barn, and the Ballard design stores trying to decide if it was worth splurging on one of those trees but I'm so so glad that I went with this one because it does have a super similar look for like one third of the price. So once it was up and fluffed, it was time for the moment of truth to see what it looked like plugged in and oh my gosh, I loved it so much. It's just such a classy, timeless and realistic looking tree that helps to fill out this corner really nicely. So something I like to do near the base of the tree is just add a nice cozy texture. And here I'm just gonna do that with a chunky knit tree skirt that I found at Home Goods last year. And I like that it coordinates with my stockings and kind of ties this corner of the room together and it'll add a soft textural base to layer presents on top of later and if you don't have a tree skirt you can always just use a blanket that you already have laying around the house as well i just love how this turned out and i'm definitely going to be decorating the tree in a future video so stay tuned for that but now that the main living area has an established base i'm going to add in some colorful accents and i like to keep things pretty neutral overall but this year i really wanted to do a classic pop of burgundy so usually when incorporating an accent color I like to pick at least three objects that bring in that color and are dispersed through different areas of the room so these were the items that I chose and the first thing I started with were the faux burgundy stems that I found at Hobby Lobby so I just used this rustic vase that I had DIY'd in a previous video and arranged them in there and burgundy or red stems are great to use in holiday decorating because they help to break up all of that greenery that we usually have going on in our spaces and just help to add some variety as well as a pop of color so next I wanted to tie in some color into my mantle styling so I just used these vintage brass candlestick holders that I found at the thrift store and I added my burgundy candlesticks. I love the texture that the twisted taper candle adds and how again it's just a nice decor piece to fit into this awkward end space on our mantle. So next I found this fringe chiffon ribbon on Amazon and I thought it would look really cute just tied onto my stockings. And this is such an easy, cheap and simple way to tie in an accent color into your mantle styling while also giving it that layered designer look at the same time. So you can kind of see over here on this side of the room, nothing crazy, just a nice little subtle pop of burgundy. Okay, so next I found this yummy cinnamon stick candle at Michael's for under $4 and I'm going to show you a really easy way to just transform a cheap candle and give it a little bit of rustic charm. So you can remove the label if you want, but I'm just lazy so I turned it towards the back and then I just took this jute cord that I found at Walmart and wrapped it around the candle three times. And then you just need some sort of garnishes. So I'm using this dried orange, but you can also use a cinnamon stick or a little pine cone and then I just went into my 
my backyard and snipped a little piece off of my olive tree and used that, but you can use whatever greenery you have around you, or you can even use faux greenery if you want. So I just tied that in with the jute cord, made a little bow, and that is it. This is so simple and easy to do, but it really transforms the whole look of the candle and is a great way to dress up cheap candles for decor purposes, or it's a great thing to do for gifts as well. This rustic candle helps spread that burgundy accent over to my console table, and candles are great accent pieces to complete a group of three, and most designers style in groups of three, usually with everything being a different height just because it's super pleasing to the eye. Next, I wanted to add a festive touch to my mirror, so I just used those same target picks that I found in the dollar spot and tucked four of them behind my mirror, and then I just used another one of those command strips to hold a piece of that burgundy chiffon ribbon into place, and then to make it appear more grand, I just doubled the ribbon. So there were four strings total, and then I tied that into a nice bow. And for the ends of the ribbon, I just folded them in half and then cut them on a diagonal for a pretty V-shaped detail, and that is it. Just a super simple and easy way to dress up a mirror for the holidays. And then lastly, it was time to add some festive pillows and textiles to my sofa, so I added this cable knit throw that I found at Target last year, and when using a throw blanket on a sofa, I think it really makes a nice statement when it contrasts to your sofa's color. So here we have a light throw on a dark sofa, but if you have a light sofa, maybe consider adding a darker throw. I just think that contrast looks really nice. And then I found these really cute plaid pillows that were kind of a cross between a rust color and a burgundy, and they were $35 each. And I like that they helped tie in that burgundy accent. And then I layered in a white pillow in the middle that I already had and added this textured green pillow that I also found at Home Goods for $35. And when pairing pillows, a foolproof format is to pick a neutral, a texture, and then a pattern. And I love how these all coordinate with each other as a perfect pairing. And I also like how the pillows help finish off the space and tie in that subtle green and burgundy color scheme that we have going on throughout the rest of the space. And that is it. I am loving this year's holiday living room look. It's timeless, it's classic, it's cozy. It has subtle pops of color. And I'm also loving all the realistic looking greenery pieces and how everything just feels very natural and organic, giving my room that cozy cabin-like feel. Right, everyone that about wraps up this video I hope that you enjoyed seeing my Christmas living room decorate with me obviously I have a lot more rooms to decorate so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future holiday content I just want to thank you all so much for watching this video I am super grateful for each and every one of you if you have the time and the energy leave me a comment below I love to hear from you all I hope you're having a great November so far and I will see you all in my next video bye